Oh, it's a Victini. Oh, he's off. Okay. Um, guess we just chase. He doesn't have the like the aura around him, so it's not gonna be an, an anomaly battle. So we probably just gotta chase it down, I would imagine. Gonna check every nook and cranny of this area. Oh. How far can you run? Oh, Mark, you've come to help too. Shall we work together to catch this thing? I've been chasing it all around this place for some time already. But cornering it seems nigh impossible. Still no point in giving up now. How much further could it possibly go? Let's find out. Okay, looks like we're gonna be chasing it down with Bennett. Wait, is this new? Oh, it's... Oh, my God. How, oh, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so was the last... I think this is one more than the last one in Victory Road, right? Because it started at three and then went four and five. This one has six. What's the last one? Habit. No, wait, this is... No, this is not new. No, it's not new. We've seen this one before. So they're all... So it's just another six one. Luster, habit, foliation, purity, hardness, and size. Okay. This one seems interesting, though, because as you can see, there's, like, pieces that are, like, like, the green can't go all the way to flawless. So that's interesting. Like, you have this big boulder block in those two spots. Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, well... It's probably going to take us... I think the last one in Victory Road took us, like, nearly 20 minutes? Or maybe, like, half an hour? I don't remember how long it took us to complete that one, but... I'm assuming this one's going to be just as hard. The little thing ran straight through. Jumped over this machine, and here we are. Well, why can't... If it, if it can jump over, why can't we jump over? I mean, what's stopping us? You already got through Victory Road run once, so you should already know about, the about these. But this one looks particularly unfriendly. I suppose I'll be your guide to this disaster tonight. How should we start? Let's see those clues. Best get a notepad. This is a mess. Oh my god. <laughs> There's only eight of them, but they're long. So as always, no two crystals share any of the same quality. Oh my god, dude. I, I might actually need to get a notepad for this one. The purity of the coxcomb gem is less than the purity of the minuscule gem, which is less than the purity of the vitreous gem. The hardness of the imminent gem is less than the hardness of the perfect gem, which is less than the hardness of the cubic gem. The purity of the gem with a hardness of 5 is less than the purity of the gem with perfect foliation, which is less than the purity of the pearly gem. So wait, are they not going to name a single gem? If that's the case, then I feel like with this one it's just going to have to be a uh, guess and check with this, if they're not going to name any gems. We do have a good amount of help with this one, though, because, as you can see, the green or the emerald and amethyst can't be on these last two spots, which means one of them has to be here and the other has to be here. What is this? Foliation. So one of them has to be indistinct and the other has to be difficult. So... Okay, so I figured out the first piece to the puzzle, 100%. So I figured out that ruby has to be tabular. The reason I just realized, I can't push, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have pushed this here because if this is wrong, I can't push him back to their original spots, but whatever, I'll fix that later. Anyway, um, 
Yes, I found out Ruby has to be tabular habit because, first of all, obviously it can't be coxcomb because it physically can't go in that spot. But uh, then after writing down the information, I found out it also couldn't be cubic or hexagonal because, first off with cubic, so we know Ruby has to be either over here on foliation. We know it has to be perfect or eminent because of this big boulder blocking the way down here. And so it compares both eminent and perfect to cubic, cubic habit when it comes to hardness. So because it compares them to cubic, Ruby can't be cubic because it has to be either one of those two when it comes to foliation. So that narrowed it down to either hexagonal or tabular. Tabular? Tabular. Uh, but then I read, wrote down the information for foliation. And here it has seven hardness above large size above hexagonal. And that means hexagonal has to be in these bottom two slots because it has two above it. So that means it could not be Ruby because Ruby has to be in these top two slots. So that gave us that Ruby has to be in tabular, you know, habit. So we got one down, and that's currently all the information I got. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, one piece down, a lot more to go. Okay, I found out another piece of the puzzle. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that Sapphire has to be Coxcomb, Coxcomb habit because... First off, we know Indistinct has to be either Emerald or Amethyst because of this big boulder. It has to be one of those two. And they compare, they compare Indistinct Foliation with both Cubic and Coxcomb Habits. So because it compares them with both of those, and we know Tabular has to be Ruby, then that means one of these two has to be Hexagonal, which means Sapphire cannot be Hexagonal. So that means Sapphire has to be either Cubic or Coxcomb, but it can't be Cubic for the same reason that Ruby couldn't be Cubic. And that was because they compared Ruby, or they compared Cubic to Perfect and Eminent Foliation, which we know that Sapphire has to be one of those. So because of all that, that means Sapphire has to be Coxcomb. So yeah, that means Amethyst and Emerald, one of them has to be Cubic, the other has to be Hexagonal. So yeah, that's all I got for now. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we're solving this one step at a time, and I got another one. I got another one that I know is a hundred percent correct. So when they rank habit, they say that flawless is below pearly and silky luster, which means flawless has to be one of these bottom two spots, which means it has to be either ameth amethyst or emerald but it can't be Emerald because there's a rock blocking the way, which means that Amethyst has to 100% be flawless. So uh, yeah, uh, and with that information, they only list flawless on here, I think once. Yeah, they only list it in Habit and they compare it to Pearly and Silky Luster, which means Amethyst can't be Pearly or Silky Luster which means it has to be either Adamantine or Vitreous. So we have a 50-50 there with, uh, with Amethyst. But yeah, that's all I got for now. Okay, I have another piece to the puzzle, I think. So I'm pretty sure that Emerald has to be pearly... What is this, Luster? Yeah, it has to be pearly Luster. Because we know that Ruby has to be either Silky or Vitreous because we know Emer or we know Ruby is tabular habit, and when it comes to luster, tabular is below cubic and indistinct. So because it's below both of those, we know that it has to be one of these bottom two slots, which is vitreous or silky, so it can't be pearly. So that rules out Ruby. We also ruled out amethyst, because amethyst has to be either vitreous or adamantine, because we know that am amethyst is flawless, and they compare Flawless to Pearly and Silky when it comes to Habit. So that's that's how we know that it's not Amethyst. And that's also how we know that it's not Sapphire, because Pearly has less Habit than Silky. And we know that Sapphire has the most, the most Habit, the highest Habit. I don't know how you're supposed to say that, but yeah, it can't be below 
anything. So that means it can't be... Sapphire can't be a pearly uh, luster, which only leaves emerald. So yeah, so now that we know that emerald has a pearly luster, does that help me out with anything else? Um, let me just quickly look through here. I don't know. Uh, they name pearly anywhere. They only name it once. That's with habit. Oh, actually, that does help. Yeah, that does help because with habit, flawless is below pearly when it comes to habit. And since we know amethyst is flawless, that means emerald has to be here because amethyst has to be below. Okay, so we completely figured out habit. So now we cubic and hexagonal. So we know those are cubic and hexagonal respectively. So now let's look even more. Let's go even more in depth. So because they compare indistinct to cubic, and we know that cubic is amethyst, that means indistinct has to be emerald. And if indistinct is emerald, amethyst has to be there, which is difficult. So it's starting to come together. It's starting to come together. Okay, we got another piece of the puzzle here. So in terms of luster, we know that emerald is a pearly luster. And we know that it has a higher luster than cubic, which is amethyst, and tabular, which is ruby. Which means sapphire, which means those two have to be down here, but that also means that sapphire should be 100% guaranteed to have adamantine luster. And that actually helps us fill this out because amethyst had to be either vitreous or adamantine. Since it can't be adamantine, it has to be vitreous, which means ruby has to be silky. So with that, we've now filled out three of the six. No, two of the six. This one's half filled out. Like it's a 50, 50 those two are 50, 50 with eminent and perfect, but yeah, pretty much half filled out. Anyways. Okay, so I'm pretty sure emerald has to be pure because again, when comparing purity Pearly luster is above perfect foliation and five hardness. So because of that, it has to be above, you know, two others. And since we know am amethyst is at the very top, that means emerald has to be here. And we know perfect foliation, right? No, we don't. Or, or do we? No, we don't. Never mind, we don't. So yeah, these two, it's a 50-50 here and a 50-50 here. Okay, so we figured out that emerald has to have a has to have a it has to have a six hardness because it can't be five because they compare five hardness to pearly luster, and we know emerald has a pearly luster, so it, that means you know it can't be five hardness. And then also, they compare indistinct foliation, which we know is emerald. They compare it to eight hardness. So we also know it can't be eight. So it has to be either six or seven. And it has to be six because they also compare hexagonal habit, which we know is emerald. They compare it to seven hardness. So because it's com being compared to all the other three hardnesses, hardnesses, is that a word? I don't know. That means it has to be six because it's being compared to all the other sizes or hardnesses. Yeah. So it has to be at six. So that's good progress okay amethyst has to be eight hardness has to be 100 percent because when comparing hardness cubic is above perfect and imminent and since we know amethyst is cubic and we know both perfect and imminent have to be either ruby or sapphire that means amethyst has to be above both. So it has to be at the very top then. Because that, that's the only way it can be above both with emerald being here at six. We know foliation, right? Kinda. We know these two are at the bottom.
In terms of size, Indistinct and Coxcomb are at the bottom in terms of size. Sapphire has to be either minuscule or small. Actually, no. Okay, I got this one too. Sapphire has to be small because it's below indistinct and eight hardness in terms of size, which means it has to be in the bottom two. And it cannot be minuscule because it's being compared to minuscule in terms of purity. It has a lower purity than the minuscule than the gem that's minuscule. So Sapphire has to go there. What was that again? Small? I don't think they compare small to anything. Okay, indistinct. We don't, we don't know what indistinct is yet, or do we? No, we do. Emerald is indistinct. So emerald has to be in one of these two slots. Eight hardness is also above sapphire. So yeah, these top two have to be either emerald or amethyst, which means this has to be ruby. Ruby has to be minuscule. If that's the case, where's purity at? Right here. Minuscule is above coxcomb in terms of purity. Okay, we're back. The last thing I figured out was, I'm not sure if I said this, but I figured out purity. So we already had these top two, but to decide which one of either Ruby or Sapphire was impure or middling, uh, so we know in terms of purity that Coxcomb, which is Sapphire, is below Minuscule, which is Ruby. So it was pretty simple to figure that part out. That meant that, meant that Sapphire had to be impure and Ruby had to be middling. And besides that, we I also figured out size because we know eight hardness, the gem with eight hardness, which is amethyst, is above the gem with indistinct foliation, which is emerald. And since there's only two spots left, that means that emerald has to be here and amethyst has to be there, large and medium. Okay, so we only need hardness and foliation. At this point, we could just guess and check, honestly. We really could. Where's foliation at? Okay, so foliation, seven hardness is above the large gem. We don't know which one of these is seven hardness, but we can, so at this point, we just guess and check. So if we say Ruby is seven hardness, and this goes here, that means that Ruby also has to be at the very top here, and Sapphire goes here, right? If this is wrong, then it's just the other way around. So let's go ahead and guess and check. I'll try running it. No good then. Unfortunate. Don't worry though, I'm also working on the solution. Okay, so since that's not it, it has to be the other way around. Which means Ruby has to go there, Sapphire has to go here, and that means these two also have to switch. And if this is wrong, then I did something that I messed up somewhere along the line to here. Let's see if this has to be right, it has to be. What? Oh my god. I can't believe it. No, wait. Oh, 
Oh, I had it backwards. No, I didn't. No, I did have it backwards. Oh. Okay, that's what... I had it backwards. I thought... Because in terms of hardness, I thought it was eminent over perfect. But it's the other way around. It's perfect over eminent. So the perfect has to be in the seven spot. So it's either this or it's the other way around. Check solution. Got it. Let's go, dude. Impressive. That should be expected for me, Mark. When did Sarah get here? I'm a little embarrassed that I was beaten to it, but thanks for getting it. Anyway, Victini awaits. Oh, you're here. I didn't expect to catch up with you so quickly. Mother. I, I really wish you would just call me mom, like a normal child. But I'm not just a child, Mother. And few would call me normal. Why are you here? I heard you were out here looking for something. Thought it could give... Thought it could be a good chance to catch up, given that we haven't talked since I nearly fell into a black hole that resulted from your escapade with a world-ending organization. You know, normal parent-child bonding stuff. <laughs> I won't stop you from accompanying us on one condition. We are not here as parent and child. We are here as equals, both professional representatives of an official league, working to ensure the safety of our region. Equals, the newest elite says to a humble mid-tier gym leader. Yes, equals with equal respect. Professionals, not family. Both can be true with equal respect. Consider it. I'm confused. Oh, bye. He just leaves. Have I not been respectful? I'd say something like, they grow up so fast. But I think the sentence alone would age me another 10 years on the spot. Oh man, okay, well. Again, I love these puzzles. I'm not gonna, also, you know, I, I, uh, I really do appreciate whoever put these puzzles together because these, these like, these mind puzzles, these, I don't know what else to call them, but yeah, these are really good. Like these are really good. This is probably, I would say my favorite puzzle in the entire game. So uh, yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and continue on. Is there anything over here? Just an EXP candy, so nothing special. Wait, oh. Something, something, something about change. I don't know. Something about him just... Oh, she's talking about Bennett? Now he's changed? Something about him just bugs me. Get it? Bug? Also, another question. How did Bennett just become an Elite Four member? He went from literally nobody. He was just, you know, Sarah, the Ice-type gym leader's son to a full-fledged gym leader. Like, that happened because, you know, they faked Laura's resignation, and then I guess Bennett said, oh, I'll be the gym leader. <laughs> and then I, get, I guess they gave him some kind of test, which is weird. Like, what would an Elite Four test even look like? I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of just weird how he goes from being literally nobody to a full-fledged Elite Four. Like, he just skipped Gym Leader altogether and just went all the way to Elite Four. Like, you would think he'd start off as, like, the reserve bug leader, 
you know, behind uh, Shelly. But no, he just skipped all of that and went straight to the top. Or I guess near the top. Still, still feels a little weird that that just happened. Like, I don't know. I feel like it, it should go in, like, tiers. Like, when Laura resigned, they should have chosen, like, one of the top-tier gym leaders, like Safira or Hardy, to take her place, right? You don't just pick some random person from nowhere and put them in that high-ranking position. I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's just me, but I feel like that's how it should have gone. Like, you pick, like, Safira or Hardy or one of the, like, the, the very top of the top of gym leaders. You know, you pick one of them to fill in that spot, and then you, you know, they have reserve leaders. So, you know, the reserve leader becomes the new leader. And then you pick a new reserve leader. I feel like that's how it should have gone, but for story's sake, they just kind of made Bennett a gym leader. Or a lead four member. Oh, an ability capsule. Cool. Dude, this place looks sick. Let's go talk to Bennett before we do anything else. A gear cave. Agar cave? A gear? Agar? I think it's Agar. Our mark has gotten quite cozy up there. I don't think there's any way to reach it, is there? Reaching it would be pointless. It would just run away again. We need a different approach. Between the three of us, maybe we could corner it. This place must have been used as a camp. Look, among the stones, a stirring spoon. Aren't we still in the new world? Considering the ecolo ecology? Ecology, I think? I assume not. The generated world must have connected to both Victory Road and this previously isolated cave. This camp was probably left, be left behind by a hiker some time ago, suggesting that it's impractical rather than impossible to get here by foot. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't exactly help us with Victini. No, I believe it does. This camp has seen a healthy share of use, and between this lush environment and the water below, I suspect there's no shortage of food here. Rather than desperately chasing after Victini, let's do our best to make ourselves worth approaching. You're gonna lure it in with food? It's the choiciest course of action. Choiciest? In a worst case scenario, we can all enjoy a nice meal together ourselves and come up with an alternative. Oh, fine. If we can find a pot, I'm sure I can whip up something. You don't get to be you don't get to be a single mother without learning to improvise a bit. Our hiker left his spoon behind. With any luck, he'll have left his pot too. Mother, would you mind searching for that or something equally usable? That can't be sanitary. <laughs> But if and when I find it, I suppose the lake down there looks clean Looks clean enough. I hear curries are quite popular with Pokemon and Galar. Mark, would you mind helping me gather some ingredients? Considering the ecology here, I think most everything we need could be found in this very cave. I have a rough list of what to look for. Talk to me when you're ready to hear it. Okay. Okay, we're back. Let's go ahead and continue on. I already had a chance to look around the area a bit, and I think I have a pretty good idea of what's available for us to use. I believe our main course tonight will be Spiced Apple Galarian Style Curry. Cool. From this point, we'll need seven things. One sweet apple for the main course, one tart apple, for substance and depth, one balm mushroom for a second texture, one pecha berry for the signature sweetness, check the headbutt trees for one, okay, berry juice for sweetness and thinning, a far-fetched stick, the leek will saute into a perfect start, and the ends are the good garnish, or a good garnish. Rage powder, 
Properly treated, this powder stops having adverse effects and starts being a wonderful spice mix. That should be it. If you want some hints on where to find everything, feel free to ask. I have a good general idea for most things. Okay, I think we'll just uh, we'll just go and look, I guess. 